What's going on guys? So in this video, we're talking about 10 very particular fragrances this time around. Uh, these are ones that every time I spray them, whether it's just one random spray on my arm or it's a full wearing, I can't stop smelling myself. These are some of the most addictive aromas I own in my collection. They smell so damn good, they're pretty much addictive. Uh, so I want to talk to you about them today. If you haven't heard of these, maybe it'll spark your interest and maybe you find something worth sampling. Who knows? But if not, I still want to talk to you about 10 of the most intoxicating, addictive smelling fragrances that I own in my collection that I have just been enjoying thoroughly. So stay tuned. Now with this first one, at the recording of this, this is the newest flanker, and admittedly I have been eager to go back to the original DNA. I have been spraying it a lot lately, and that timing of wanting to spray that one has kind of passed to where now I'm moving on to wanting to spray this one, and it's arguably the best in the line, in my opinion, besides the original. We're talking about Spice Bomb Infrared from Victor and Rolf. Some may argue Extreme is the best, I understand. It's all to taste. But for me personally, this, this focuses on the spice more than the sweet. Don't get me wrong. There is a nice little, like, almost Red Hots type of candy sweetness to this. Nice, strong red pepper, almost cinnamon, fire hot type of spice to this. I love the way this one smells. I think it was a great addition to this line. Admittedly, I love the entire line, especially the original. Honestly, if I can only keep one, it might have to be the original. It probably would be the original. But lately, and previously before my recent rekindling of love for the original, I've been digging this one quite a bit. And I think as we cool down more and more as far as the temperatures, because we're getting later into the summer at the recording of this, and I start spraying this one even more, gonna get to enjoy it that much more this is one like I said I just every time I wear it I cannot stop smelling myself I love getting the random wafts I like spraying somewhere on my arm for me to have a personal spray or if nothing else I'll have it on my chest where it's just as simple as leaning down and doing that it is what it is sometimes you just get in the mood to smell one of these wonderful aromas and when you're wearing something like spice bomb infrared it's hard not to keep smelling yourself it's a very addictive scent in my personal opinion Spice Bomb Infrared. This is one of the most intoxicating fragrances I've ever smelled. It's my favorite vanilla benzoin amber fragrance. This narrowly beats out Grand Soir from Mason Francis Kirk John. We're talking about Nishane's Ani. I can't stop smelling myself anytime I spray this and just having it right here in front of me. I just gotta sniff and sniff and sniff. It's so good. God, it's, it's so, it's the way the benzoin comes across, it's got a little bit of a boozy hit in the top. Even though I don't recall there ever being any boozy notes, there's a nice tone of some warm spice in the backdrop, but it doesn't really make it too spicy of a fragrance. It really kind of counterbalances the sweetness here very well. It doesn't come across very powdery. It's not the most dry amber vanilla smell out there. Like I said, the benzoin kind of provides this boozy pop. I love smelling this fragrance. I love when I wear this one, and if nothing else, just doing like this randomly when I'm around the bottle it's just one of those fragrances that once you get a whiff of the aroma you want to keep smelling it it's that damn good one that's kind of a must try in my opinion there's a lot of really good stuff from Nishane but when it comes to intoxicating there's two that immediately come to mind Fan Your Flames and this which Fan Your Flames could have went in this video but I didn't want to include two from Nishane I just went with what in my opinion is the king of the mountaintop when it comes to fragrances from the house that I just cannot stop sniffing when I wear. It's just an addictive aroma. It's so damn intoxicating. Great in the cooler weather. Absolutely fantastic for evenings out. That's the main thing I wear it for. One of the best. It's I Ani. Now this particular fragrance may seem odd to some of you, but for me, I still can't believe it's a designer fragrance. 
And the reason I say that is because the quality in the blend is just so damn good here. It's so well done. It's a Middle Eastern exclusive that admittedly isn't that difficult to get here in the States. We're talking about Dolce & Gabbana, The One Mysterious Night. There is three in this line. There's Royal Night and there's Luminous Night. I do have Luminous Night as well. That is a gorgeous fragrance in its own right. I've never smelled Royal Night, but this, this is one of one of the best oud rose fragrances i've ever smelled and that covers a lot of ground and look i haven't smelled even remotely close to all of the oud rose offerings out on the marketplace but this one comes across very powdery on my skin very warm wood and dusty rose powdery type of smell i love the dusty powdery nature of this fragrance i feel like it offers a class and elegance to this particular scent profile. It's a jammy, thick, sweet type of rose and fruity smell at the top. It's just absolutely stunning in my opinion. But the powdery nature hits me right away and just gets more and more powdery as it dries. So if you're not a fan of powdery, you won't like this, but this is an alluring scent right here. I love smelling myself when I wear this one. It's not one that I wear often. It's more special occasion when I'm in the mood for Oud Rose. This is my special occasion Oud Rose. It's a conversation starter. It's a show out. This is a head turning fragrance. It has that type of scent profile to it and the sillage creates a wonderful bubble of magic aroma. I just love the way this stuff smells on my skin. I don't know how easy it would be to sample. I'm sure you'd have to go to a decant site that sells it, uh, which there are tons of decant sites out there. You would just have to search around, but it's worth the experience. Have you smelled Oud Rose before? I'm sure you have. Like I said, there's countless Oud Rose fragrances out there, but the way this blend is done with its powdery nature, it's just one of my personal favorites. I love smelling this stuff. It's a super addictive aroma to me. We're talking about Dolce & Gabbana, the one mysterious night. This is one that I personally find never gets old, and I can't wait for cooler weather to start wearing this fragrance again. We are talking about Parfums de Marly, Layton. That's right, Mr. Mass Appeal in a bottle right here, but a unique crowd pleaser. As strange as that sounds, a unique fragrance that's a crowd pleaser because before this DNA, nothing else smelled like this. It's been replicated since. This beautiful, minty geranium. It's a minty, slightly earthy type of geranium. It does provide a bit of a Vicks VapoRub type of smell. Once you smell that, you can't not smell it every time you spray it, but it's oddly attractive. There's a beautiful fruitiness from some apple here. There's a ton of lovely cardamom spice. It's a little powdery. There's a creaminess to this vanilla, but it stays warm and spicy while still having this minty freshness. It's a very odd combination that just works. This is, like I said, a unique crowd pleaser. I have gotten many compliments wearing this one. I have friends that have this fragrance that it's one of their most complimented fragrances. And just for me personally, I love smelling this one on myself. Whether it's the original or a clone or a twist on the DNA, whatever, I enjoy all of it because I enjoy this particular scent, day, scent DNA. But honestly, the best route to go is definitely going with just grabbing Leighton. Don't bother with a clone. Yes, you're going to spend a bit more money, I understand, versus getting one of the clones, but the quality is a little bit better here than what you can expect from a clone. And like I said, this is just so addictive to smell. It's one that I can just sniff and sniff and sniff. This is one that I spray a little heavier than I really should. Uh, I like to get a pretty nice and hefty sillage going, so it's very, very easy to smell myself pretty much through the entirety of the wear that it's going to be on my skin. Just a beautiful fragrance. Uh, I don't care what anybody says. I love this stuff. Parfums de Marley Layton. You can tell by these selections that this is just fragrances that do it for me because some of these aren't the most popular of fragrances, like this one in particular, Sauvage Parfum from Dior. I've been wearing the hell out of this one lately. I love the way this one smells. It is my favorite rendition of Sauvage over Elixir because it still has a little bit of that citrusy freshness. Here it's got a little bit more of an orangey type of smell than it does a bergamot, but you still have the aromatics, you still have the woods, the nice creamy tone, only it's a little bit sweeter here. It's not quite as spicy as the Eau de Parfum, but what it does have going for it is this gorgeous olibanum note. It's more warm, ambery, and a little bit incensey from the olibanum. I really, really 
really love the way this one smells on me. I always spray my chest with this one. I do go anosmic to it, so I tend to spray somewhere on my arms or even sometimes on the top of my hand just so I can smell it whenever the hell I want. I'm so thrilled to have a big, massive 200 milliliter bottle because it was a blind buy when I bought it initially, but lucky, luckily for me, it ended up being my absolute favorite version of the scent DNA. I think none of the other ones can actually hold a candle to it as far as scent profile, except Elixir. Elixir does come really freaking close. It's kind of 1A and 1B. I just really like the warm, darker nuances to the scent profile that kind of veer away from being just heavy on the Ambroxan. Though I do love the Ambroxan in the EDT and the EDP. I love those fragrances. They are really good. I like a great blue fragrance that's got the shower gel appeal. I love blue fragrances. That's no secret. But here, they twist and polish and refine the scent profile to make it just something a bit more on the unique side versus the originals, the EDT and the EDP, and even the Cool Spray. And you're going to get something that's more evening appropriate, a bit more mature, a little bit more grown up, not quite as juvenile, youthful, and playful. I dig that about this scent profile. As you can tell, I have a lot to say about it because I absolutely love smelling this one as often as possible. One that gets no love, Dior Sauvage Parfum. I actually sprayed this one on my arm a couple of nights ago when I put this collection of fragrances together. Uh, I've been meaning to record this for a few days now. This is one of my favorite personal spray fragrances because the sillage isn't really heavy. The projection isn't really heavy, but it does stay on my skin a long time. This is... Bar none, my favorite ginger fragrance I own. We're talking about Serge Lutin, 5 o'clock Eau Jean Jean Bray. Those of you that have been following me for a while, you already know this is my favorite ginger fragrance and one of my favorite smells in my collection altogether. So there's a lovely black tea note that provides this soothing herbal tone without getting away from the heft. It's a hefty dose of ginger in the top. More of a natural ginger smell too. It smells like freshly cut ginger. Kind of kind of marinating in tea with a tea bag, honestly, speaking of the black tea note. And then the cacao here offers this kind of leathery, smoky type of feel, more so than anything chocolatey. This is so well composed. So great to smell. I love when this is on my skin. This is one that I just can't stop sniffing myself. I don't even need to have a full wearing. As long as I can have a spray somewhere on my arm to just sniff for me, I could care less if anyone else smells me because I'm in my own little world when it comes to this one. This is one of those fragrances that really provides a soothing, almost euphoric and relaxing aromatherapy session for me personally. It's so addictive to smell. I love the way this fragrance comes across. I'll always have this in my collection because I don't spray it that often and it's quality oil, so it's gonna last a really, really, really long time in my collection in the first place. I'll never need another bottle of this. <sighs> man because it's just one of those things that I just need one or two sprays I don't do full wearings often I just do a little personal spray to just enjoy for myself because it smells that damn good definitely try this one I highly recommend trying this one if you like ginger Serge Lutin five o'clock with ginger bray this one may surprise some because it's such a crowd pleasing designer scent but I just love the way it smells so much since I put this little collection of fragrances together. I've been pulling the cap off of this one and smelling it out the atomizer more than, yeah, more than any other fragrance here, which I've been doing it with a lot of them. But we're talking about the most wanted from Azaro. I love this stuff. This is one of my favorite releases from 2021. One of my top two or three designer releases from last year as well, let alone as a whole. It's so good. This beautiful spicy and sweet toffee note, it's a little bit more on the synthetic side, but it's very smooth at the same time. It's well composed. It's only three notes, but it smells like there's a little bit more going on there, but it's definitely sweet, warm, and spicy, and that's all that really matters. It's sweet, warm, and spicy. It's what you would expect from the line. It's nothing complex and deep, but it's just so attractive to me personally. This is another one that I can just spray one or two sprays on my arm and just enjoy for myself. Admittedly, more times than not, I'll just do a full wearing. This is one that's going to get several wearings as we transition into the cooler months. I'm excited to wear this one in the fall and winter this upcoming season. Uh, but it's one that I actually like a little bit more than its new Parfum Flanker. Yes, that's a beautiful fragrance. It's got this burning woods type of smell. It does 
kind of change the scent profile a little bit, but not enough to where I'm like, ooh, I need a bottle of that one. I'd rather just wear this one. I have a bottle of it. I enjoy it. I do have a decan of the Parfum, but I just find this to be a better fragrance overall for my particular taste because it's just so addictive for me to sniff on. I love smelling this fragrance when it's on my skin and even just smelling it through the atomizer satisfies me. It's just an enjoyable scent profile. Try this one if you haven't. I was a big fan of Wanted by Night for the longest time. Still am, but I'd take this 10 times out of 10 over it because I just love the way it smells that much more. You know, it's a Zorro, the most wanted. This is kind of a hidden gem niche, honestly. And I really feel like if you're looking to explore something from a little small independent niche house that's doing phenomenal work with top tier oils, I think you need to check out Flower City Fragrance and specifically check out Bourbon Vanilla. Get a sample of this. The, van the Tonka bean that's used here smells like vanilla ice cream in the top. Oh, it's so beautiful out of the atomizer even. There it is with this aged wooden barrel full of bourbon. This warm, boozy, spiced booze type of feel with this aged dry wood type of smell. It's a very dry wood with ice cream, vanilla freaking ice cream of all things. It has a vanilla ice cream accord. I know I keep repeating it because that's crazy to me because I know it's a Tonka bean note, but it's the type of Tonka bean that's used and the way the blend comes across. It offers a, va a freaking vanilla ice cream smell with a barrel full of bourbon with some spice. It just, it's been a while I've had this fragrance now and I still can't completely wrap my head around how he was able to pull this off. It is such a unique bourbon fragrance. And you wouldn't think with the name Bourbon Vanilla that it's going to be unique and different from any other bourbon vanilla out there, but it is. The quality of oils, the sourcing of the oils, it's the particular Tonka bean that changes this fragrance with the way the blend is done. Just an absolutely gorgeous scent profile that I can't wait for colder weather to spray because it's way too heavy of a fragrance for this particular season that I'm, we're right in the middle of summer right now. So it's not one I've been spraying, it's one I've been smelling out of the atomizer that I can't wait to spray as it cools down because it's so freaking addictive. I love the way this one smells. It's Flower City Fragrance Bourbon Vanilla. This one should not come as a surprise if you watch me on a regular basis. I love this on my skin. I love this on my wife's skin. I just love the way this smells as a whole. It is Zaharoff Signature Rosé. My favorite rose fragrance, my favorite Zaharoff fragrance, and kind of my favorite incense fragrance, to be honest with you. I think a close second for favorite incense heavy fragrance would be Epic Man from Amouage. I love the way the incense is done in that one in particular because there's a little bit of tobacco, some slightly you know cleaner medicinal type of oud, some spices and such. But in the end, it can't quite hold a candle to this one because of the blend. I never thought I would be so into rose heavy fragrances. I do have a select amount of rose fragrances that I absolutely love. For example, we talked about one of my favorite oud roses earlier, but this is straight up rose incense with some sweeter notes. And there's oud in here as well, but it is not an oud rose blend. Like when you hear oud rose, you would think. Nothing even remotely close to Dolce & Gabbana, the one mysterious night, because the oud here is just a touch of a warm wood backdrop, kind of a sweeter warm wood oud type of smell that's very tame. It's very controlled. It's in the backdrop in the base. What you will get is this sugarcane vanilla bean note to offer a nice, smooth, sweet, supportive tone to the pretty fresh Turkish rose with this gorgeous hit of olibanum tears, if I remember correctly, is the particular note that Claude used. That's the particular oil. It's called olibanum tears. It's a very specific incense to create this rose, to help create this rose incense accord that Zaharoff was looking for. Claude was able to bring it to life. It is a gorgeous scent, one I highly advise people try. Even if you're not a big fan of Rose, this could make you a believer. Get a sample from the website, try it out. You can definitely get samples for just a couple, just a few dollars, and you'll be able to get this experience because this is one that I love smelling out the atomizer. I love wearing out of the shower. I love wearing casually. I like wearing to run errands. Myself and my wife like to wear it to dinner. There's never a bad time or bad season. It actually works great in the summer 
to wear this damn fragrance. It's a masculine rose, but at the end of the day, it's perfectly unisex. Because like I said, it smells amazing on my wife. She has her own bottle. Definitely one of my favorite scents to sniff on. It's a Haroff Signature Rosé. Last but not least, I was really torn between both fragrances from this house because they both could go in this video. They're both remarkably intoxicating and addictive aromas. I can't help but smell myself over and over and over when I wear it. I can't help but grab the bottle, pull the cap, and sniff as such. But we're talking about the original, the namesake from Narcotica, called Narcotica. This is, without a doubt, my favorite marijuana based fragrance so it doesn't have a heavy marijuana smell it has more of an earthy green herbal feel to the cannabis note that's used here though present though prominent detectable and noticeable not overwhelming doesn't smell like you just finished smoking a bowl or just put a joint out it doesn't smell or just opened a, a bag of fresh buds it doesn't smell like that it does have this lovely precious oud that comes across as a sweet and smoky oud. There's a little bit of smoky nuance here. There's some amber that provides a nice warmth to this fragrance. It is so well composed. This is another one that Claude created. Claude Deer, for those of you that don't know when I say Claude, Claude Deer created this one for Door Prestige as he created Signature Rosé, the previous fragrance we spoke about for Zaharoff. He just does such remarkable work when he's given the creative freedom to really flex his, you know, perfumer creativity muscle if you will because he can come up with some remarkable stuff when he doesn't have strict parameters and stuff like this comes from the mind of that man if you haven't tried this one yet absolutely sample worthy a uni unique oud incense cannabis fragrance that has a prominent amber note that's the main things i smell here the oud doesn't smell of any other oud i've smelled so I'm not saying it's not available in other fragrances. I'm sure it is, but I don't own another fragrance that features oud that has this particular rare and precious oud. It's gorgeous. Like I said, sweet and smoky type of oud. Nothing too challenging, nothing barnyardy, but super freaking intoxicating. Very, very evening appropriate, unique. This is a great conversation starter. This will make a phenomenal first impression when you're going to a, you know, a dressy evening event and you want to really show out with your, the way your attire is, your appearance, and the right fragrance to really set you apart, you won't be able to stop smelling yourself and probably nobody around you once they get a whiff. It's, it smells that damn good. Get a sample and try this one. This is Narcotica by Narcotica. Well, obviously, I could have went 15, 20, 25, 30, but I just wanted to narrow it down to the 10 main ones that as of late, especially as of late, I just can't stop smelling. Even if it's just as simple as pulling the cap off and sniffing out the atomizer. These are just, to me, 10 of the most addictive freaking fragrances I own currently. I just can't stop smelling them. They smell so damn good to me. Kind of a mixed bag here, you know. Uh, some are on the more popular side, some are a bit more unique, and some are lesser known, and some may have surprised you. But until next time, do me a real quick favor, go ahead and like, comment, subscribe. So I do appreciate all the feedback, and I love hearing from you guys. What's some fragrances that you just can't stop smelling yourself when you wear? I mean, at the end of the day, we're wearing them for ourselves. It's a bonus when somebody wants to tell us we smell nice. It's nice to have, you know, some crowd-pleasing aromas that others around you will enjoy or something that you know is so unique it's a great conversation starter so you can have a conversation about the fragrance because as a fragrance lover and enthusiast i'm sure you love talking about fragrances i know i do hell that's why i have a youtube channel to talk about them and until next time i will say if you get your hands on any of the 10 that i just love to smell you give them a spray now I'm pretty confident you'll thank me later have a good one guys mm -hmm.